aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer with a deadly weapon, how do you wish to plea? I plead guilty. Count two, battery on a law enforcement officer, how do you wish to plea? Guilty. Count three, depriving an officer means of uh, protection, how do you wish to plea? Guilty. And count four, attempted use of self-defense weapon against a law enforcement officer, how do you wish to plea, sir? Guilty. New developments in two cases against confessed Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Today he pleaded guilty to assaulting a deputy while in jail awaiting his trial for the deadly school shooting. His lawyers confirmed today he's also ready to plead guilty to murdering 17 people inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. A guilty plea means those families won't have to relive the trauma of that Valentine's Day in 2018. But there's also legal leverage at play. Our Liz Crawford spoke with a former prosecutor who said the defense ran out of options. Accused Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz faced a judge Friday when his attorneys revealed he would plead guilty next week to killing 17 people. My inclination is only to accept his plea on Wednesday. Cruz told the judge he had not been on medication for about a year and struggled with anxiety and depression, but was never formally diagnosed with an illness. The guilty plea is a long time coming and has some wondering why now. They could have had their poker faces on and thought maybe they could leverage a better offer out of the state, but now in the 11th hour, they see that they really don't have a lot to argue. Former prosecutor Josh Sheraton says the defense is hoping for a life sentence rather than the death penalty. They've gotten to a point where they've exhausted all other avenues, and now they're just trying to use, you know, saving the families, the, the families of the victims and the court system the hassle, the, the heartbreak, the, the emotional part of this. Fred Guttenberg, whose daughter Jamie was killed in Parkland, asked his Twitter followers to remember the victims rather than talk about the murderer. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd is on a commission created after the shooting, charged with making Florida schools safer. He weighed in at a news conference. I have no idea what the, what the strategy is. He's a horrible mass murderer. If anyone on the face of this earth has ever earned the death penalty, Nicholas Cruz earned it, and he should receive it. Liz Crawford joins us now. You know, Liz, there have been changes across our state since that Parkland shooting. Alyssa's Law Stop the Bleed Kits and Fortify Florida. Let's take a deeper dive. Alyssa's Law requires every school to have a panic button system that allows teachers and staff to silently alert law enforcement if there's an emergency. It was signed into law in 2020. Pasco and Polk County schools put in panic buttons before the law even went into effect. It was named for a 14-year-old student killed in that shooting. There's also now an Alyssa Alert, which is an app that any staff member can download and use in case of an emergency. Now, Miami Beach City Commission voted unanimously in September to buy Stop the Bleed kits for all public schools in the city. The kits have tourniquets, compression bandages, and blood clotting gauze to control excessive blood loss. These kits help bridge the gap between the time emergency responders can get to the scene. There's also Fortify Florida, the only app statewide to anonymously report school safety issues. So far, FDLE has received more than 14,000 tips right from that app and more safety changes could still come down the line thanks to the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission that's tasked with looking at policies that can protect your kids.